Okay, welcome back. Today's episode, I'm going to be taking a look at a Dreamcast that I suspect has a bad controller port, and I'll be replacing the time save battery as well. Now, I always like to do an unboxing. I turn the box upside down just to hide my address and the uh, seller's address, but this this seller really packages poorly. I mean, it's a Dreamcast. They're really strong. The plastic isn't as brittle as, say, a Super Nintendo, but I mean, you could put more than a piece of cardboard in there. And he also left a demo disc. The demo disc is scratched up, it doesn't even run. So I'm just going to put that to the side. So the Dreamcast does fire up. It seems to get the splash screen and then I get the time menu. Now this controller's plugged in, doesn't run. So I have an idea of what's going on here. So on to disassembly. First, there's one screw hidden under this modem piece, so you have to slip this off so you can get to the screw. I'm also going to take the demo disc out and start with the four screws on the bottom. So with the four screws removed, you can remove the top part. And now I'm going to remove four more screws that are holding this controller board in place so I can repair this controller board. Seems like it was a little bit tricky, but I eventually did get it out. And I removed the screws, put them off to the side, save them for later. Now let's get a better, a better shot, a close up of this piece here. So the part that usually fails on these for the controller board is this fuse here. Now this is a fuse resistor. So it usually fails just like a fuse. You would measure continuity if you don't have any continuity. It's bad. So I'm going to replace this with a 10 ohm resistor. So I take a piece of the soldering braid and just try to wick up all the uh, solder between these two through holes and it should come out. So I am going to be replacing this with a 10 ohm resistor. For reference, the color code is brown, black, black. So after I solder it in place, I'm going to take these uh, flush cuts and just remove the ends of these legs and then clean up the excess flux. Okay, so that should do the trick. Let's try and test it. So I actually uh, tested everything already and the controller board is working. I'm going to show that to you right now. And actually it's reading discs. So this unit is working perfectly fine. But um, I just set the date and time to any, the first number that was there. And it didn't hold. So I do have to order a battery. But in the meantime, I'm going to close this up while I wait for the battery. And I'm just going to clean up the shell. So just to save some time and cleaning up later, I'll just clean this up right now so I don't have to do it later. Now this unit wasn't too bad as you can see it was still perfectly white. There was a couple of scuffs on the exterior but as far as cleanliness this is one of the better units. Um, usually when you get old consoles they're much worse shape but this one was really good so that's why I ordered it. I was drawn to it and it was relatively cheap and I kind of figured what the issue was a simple fix. So I'm actually really happy how this turned out so far. So here's a little bit more of the unit working. 
so as you can see I'm gonna set the date and time right now and it won't hold but I'll set it anyway and I'll actually try it with a game now I'm gonna fast forward to all these loading screens it's in 4x so keep in mind um, I don't have a special Dreamcast that loads this fast or anything it's just in 4x So this unit is working just fine. The controllers are working, all the buttons are working, and uh, it's reading games. The, the loading screens are relatively normal. So I'll be waiting on the battery, so just stick to, stay tuned to the end of this video, and I'll be replacing that time save battery. So it's about one and a half to two weeks later. So I have the unit already disassembled. And just like I replaced the fuse, I'm going to replace this battery. I'm just going to take a piece of desoldering braid, heat up these through holes, clear up these through holes, and just slip this battery out. Sometimes the old solder is stubborn, so I like to add a little bit of fresh solder to these, these through holes and these joints here, just to get them uh, to flow a little bit easier. And even so, it's still giving me a hard time, but I eventually do get it out. So the solder I use has flux in it, so I'm just going to clean that before I start. So I'm just going to use a standard CR2032 battery. Some people don't, uh, don't advise using these batteries, but from what I understand, it, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't harm the board. So I'm just going to use this battery. Now the tricky part here is the legs here, they're not helping in any way. So I have to fashion together some sort of way to get this battery in there. So the problem with these tabbed batteries here is that the one, one leg is too short and the other leg is too long. So I'm just going to try to bend this leg back, just shorten it a bit. And the other one I have to solder a component leg just to extend it a bit. So I add a bit of solder to this side here, just so I can solder in a component leg extension. Now keep in mind, soldering to a battery like this, I don't really recommend. It might not be the best thing to do, but a quick little dab here I don't think will be the worst thing for it. But um, just keep in mind, they do make sockets for these things, or actual batteries that fit the pro profile, so you don't have to actually alter it in this way. Now this is just a makeshift way to do it if you have these common CR2032 batteries but if you don't I, if you have to order it like in my case I actually ordered the wrong battery or the, with the wrong leads with the, with the wrong tabs but if you do have to order it just keep in mind it's probably best to order sockets so you can easily replace the battery when it does go bad or just get the right battery that that has the tabs in the right way so before I close everything up, I want to make sure that the battery has voltage. So it does have 3 volts. So this thing is working. So I'll just follow it up with a quick snip of that protruding component leg. And this is the finished result. Now it's not pretty, but it will get the job done. So I'm going to speed up this a little bit. Now you've already seen me disassemble it, so reassembling is the same thing, just in reverse. Don't forget the ribbon cable and the power cable and four screws and that's it. Okay, so one last thing, make sure that the controller ports, they're flush and the board isn't sitting at an angle. Also keep in mind 
that resistor that's right above the LED, you want to bend it back up a bit. You don't want to have it sitting there because it'll obstruct the diffuser for the LED. So right here, this is why this isn't sitting flush, is because of that uh, resistor there. So I t do a cut and actually fix it, and then I do get it to sit flush, and the top shell, everything is sitting right. So after the four screws in the side piece, I'm just going to give it one last pass with some alcohol and a sponge just to remove any uh, scuffs or dirt that might have come up from my workstation when I turned it upside down. So now I'll set the date and time. I should have did this while the unit was still open. But I decided I'm pretty confident with my work, so I'll just set it up and then um, unplug it and see if the time holds. So this project actually took several weeks from ordering um, batteries and ordering parts that the correct batteries came in just as I went to film this Dreamcast um, fully complete and I didn't want to replace the old the battery I put in with newer batteries that I have in the background there so I just decided to leave it how it is and those four batteries will be used for future projects so it seems to be working so this unit is fully restored good as new so here's the finished product as you can see it's fully clean assembled and ready to go now this unit wasn't bad to begin with but I uh, still had problems so the, the little problems that I had are now solved and it is cleaner than it was before. So that's it for this video. Now if you like this video please consider giving it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, comment below and of course if you haven't already please consider subscribing and once again thank you for watching.